digging deeper into the science behind it and hearing more anecdotally from other people who whose lives have been greatly impacted by it, I am I am far more optimistic about it actually being a valuable and effective intervention. And so that's kind of why we made the decision to show it on our channel about the process of me going through utilizing the ketogenic diet to hopefully help in managing my schizoaffective disorder. Welcome back to Metabolic Mind. Metabolic Mind is a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group, where we focus on the intersection of metabolic health and mental health, and metabolic therapies like ketogenic therapy as treatment for mental illness. I'm your host, Dr. Brett Schur. Today, I'm joined by Lauren Kennedy. Now, Lauren, if you don't know her, you probably should. She is the founder, creator of a very popular YouTube channel called Living Well with Schizophrenia, with over 30 million views and over 260,000 subscribers where she chronicles her personal journey with schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type. And as you hear in this interview, she doesn't kind of just show the good stuff. She shows everything, super raw, super vulnerable about living with schizophrenia, but living well with schizophrenia, that she is able to live a, a full life, even though it's not always perfect. And that's what she chronicles on our YouTube page and her website, which I highly suggest you um, check out. But now she's embarking on a, you could say, a new venture in her treatment that through interacting with Dr. Chris Palmer and, and learning about metabolic therapies and ketogenic therapies, Lauren is now going to embark on ketogenic therapies for her schizoaffective disorder and is going to chronicle it as she goes through it, again, in her sort of honest and raw fashion. So I'm really excited to see how this goes. So in this interview, we talk about both her past, her experiences, her treatment, and also what she's looking forward to, what she's maybe afraid of, and, and some of her concerns about embarking on ketogenic therapies and metabolic therapies in general. So um, I hope you really enjoy this interview to learn about Lauren and, and hear about what she's embarking upon. And we hope to have her back many more times to uh, update us on how things are going and, of course, follow her on her own channel. Now, a quick thing that I'm a little self-conscious of. At one point, I said a phrase, the good, bad, and the ugly – and I realize it's a really old movie that not everybody will know that reference because it sounds sort of maybe derogatory um, out of context, but it's in, it's in reference to an old movie. So just please understand that it wasn't meant to be derogatory in any way. Um, the other disclaimer is this channel is for informational purposes only. We're not pro providing individual or group medical or healthcare advice for establishing a provider-patient relationship. Some of the things we talk about, including changing your diet and your lifestyle, uh, could be potentially dangerous if not done with the supervision of your healthcare team. So please take any information we give, learn from it, and bring it to your healthcare team to see if it's right for you. So with that as an introduction, let's get on with this interview with Lauren Kennedy from Living Well with Schizophrenia. Well, Lauren Kennedy, thank you so much for joining me today on Metabolic Mind. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it really is my pleasure. I mean, I've been watching you and you're, you're it's funny, sometimes people say, oh, I feel like I know you to me just because they've seen some of my videos, but you like even more so, like your YouTube channel with over 260,000 subscribers and over 30 million views, like there must be thousands of people who, who just feel like they know you. And because it's such a personal channel where, where you say so much about yourself and are so vulnerable. So, but I might be getting ahead of myself for people who this is their first time meeting you. So Lauren Kennedy, Living Well with Schizophrenia, can you give us sort of the brief summary of, of who you are, what led you to your YouTube channel, kind of your experience? Sure. So yeah, my name is Lauren and I live with schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type. I was diagnosed with this in 2016, I believe, when I was about 25 years old. And before that, I, I struggled for quite a few years with my mental health and not really kind of knowing what was going on. And at first it was treated as depression and I was giving antidepressants, but that really wasn't helping or getting to the root of the issue. And so I, you know, kept trying to access help and supports, but no one really knew what was going on. And perhaps that was partly because I didn't really understand what exactly the symptoms that I was experiencing were. And so I didn't really know how to communicate them. And I think I was also really scared to communicate them to other people, including my care team. So there was like kind of a prolonged period of not knowing what my diagnosis was. And so then I was went from depression to being diagnosed with bipolar disorder, um, then bipolar disorder with psychotic features. And then finally, everything just kind of clicked 
just before one of my hospitalizations and it was it came out that I had schizoaffective disorder because of some of the symptoms that I decided to then share with my psychiatrist. Um, it led him to diagnose me with schizoaffective disorder. Yeah, and you know, just watching, if I direct people to watch the sort of introductory video on your website about who you are, because that going through that process really sort of highlights the, I don't know, I guess you could say the the shortfalls of our, our psychiatry system and in terms of diagnosing, in terms of treatment, in terms of sort of not knowing like, oh, this is the treatment that's really going to help you. But in a way, it's a lot of sort of experimentation and trial and error, as a lot of medicine can be, but even more so when the symptoms depend on not a blood test, right? Not an x-ray marker, but but your description of what's happening, which as you described, can be very confusing and very uncertain. So you've you've gone through this process. Like I don't, in retrospect, what are what do you see as some of the things that the I guess we can call it the system has done really well and has helped you, and where it's sort of like kind of not done as well as it should, and, and left you wanting more or better treatment. Yeah. So you know, I don't think that my experience is terribly unique in terms of navigating a chronic mental illness and trying to figure out you know, what's going on and how to get proper supports and whatnot. I think that a lot of people have very similar challenges that I experienced as well in terms of not knowing what they were experiencing and then how to access care to actually treat it. And so things that went really well or things that could have gone better, you know, more awareness, I guess, on my part and the part of people around me in terms of what early signs of struggling with a mental illness can look like and how to properly intervene in order to get access to early intervention, because we know that that's crucial when it comes to treating mental illnesses like schizoaffective disorder. Um, I, you know, I think that I was really fortunate because I was in university when things were really kind of getting really intense for me. And I had phenomenal access to a care team through the university for free. So I realized that that is a huge form of privilege that I had while navigating, finding a diagnosis or whatnot, that I know that a lot of people just don't have access to, unfortunately. And so that was something that maybe did go well in my story was access to a full care team, including a therapist, a doctor, like a GP and a psychiatrist who could all see me fairly regularly. Um, I think, I think there maybe wasn't enough space in the care system to allow me to be comfortable or be empowered to really articulate what was going on for me. And so I felt really scared and kind of bogged down by stigma a lot in terms of not really being forthcoming about the differences that I was experiencing with my mental health because it felt like they were a deficit or it felt like I should feel shameful about them and I shouldn't be open and sharing what was going on. And that was really detrimental in terms of being able to access proper care and support for what I was experiencing. Yeah. Well, wow. But you talk about a quick a complete 180 degree turn, like your fear of stigma and sharing. And now here you are sharing kind of all the intimate details of your life and your living with schizophrenia um, with the world, with with millions of people. So yeah. I'm curious about that transition. I'm sure it wasn't just one day you woke up and said, I'm ready to share this, or maybe it was, I don't know. But tell, tell us how that transition happened for you. Yeah, so it was kind of slowly. I got involved with a local um, schizophrenia support organization who does talks at various groups throughout my local city, um, just kind of spreading awareness about what it means to live with schizophrenia and just kind of trying to break down a bit of stigma within local groups. And so that was kind of dipping my toes into the advocacy world, I guess. But then my partner, Rob, was he has a background in video work and photography and YouTube actually as well. He recommended that I try sharing my story on the internet, on YouTube, in order to reach a greater number of people. And at first I was like, oh my goodness, no, like that sounds terrifying. And who would want to listen to me? And But it very, very quickly became clear that it was really resonating with a lot of people. And the more openly I've shared my own experiences and my story through our YouTube channel, the more connection and 
just value I've gotten back from other people who share similar experiences that they've gone through or who thank me for putting words to experiences that they didn't know how to articulate before. And it's been a really, really powerful exercise in not only creating this connection with other people who may be going through similar things, but just building a better understanding for myself of what it is that I'm going through and building that language for myself to be able to articulate what it is that I'm experiencing and to be able to understand it on a deeper level, which ultimately has resulted in moving forward a lot further along on the journey of self-acceptance, which I think is kind of crucial. Yeah. And I, I, I can just imagine there are so many people who are really sort of desperate to have a connection with someone like you, to to see someone put into words, to see someone experience that, and in such a raw and honest way. You know, so much of, I don't know, social media and YouTube is like, look how perfect everything is, look how wonderful everything is, and that's not you. Like, you show all the details, good, bad, and, and ugly. You know, in the hospital, in the middle of, of, a psycho, of a psychotic episode, you're broadcasting a video, which is just amazing, and, and so... That's got to be scary, though. I mean, for you to just uh, to pull back the curtains, so to speak, and like I don't know, like how do you get get over that, and how do you become comfortable with that? Yeah, I think like I've I've really just learned as I've gone through this journey of being really open about my experiences, just the power of vulnerability, and how leaning into that vulnerability not only helps other people who are watching me, but it also helps myself through what I was kind of explaining about just having a better understanding of my own experience with this illness and my own human experience, you know, navigating a difficult challenge or circumstance that I'm facing in life. And I think that that is probably the biggest piece of connection that people find on our YouTube channel is just honesty about a struggle being faced by another human. It doesn't even necessarily have to be specifically that I'm facing the struggle or the challenge of living with schizophrenia. It's really just about being honest and vulnerable about whatever challenge it is that I'm experiencing in life. And I think that that's really what's connecting with other people and is what has really empowered me to keep sharing more of my story. Yeah, and, and I think it's also so important to see that you know, treatment isn't a straight line. It's not like you get on treatment and everything's fine. It's it's a it's a roller coaster with ups and downs. Hopefully, moving in the up direction as it's going up and down. And and you sort of share that. And you've been through so many different treatments. You you talk about you know ECT and the the various the numerous medications you've been on. And w- would you say you're at a point now though where you're well treated and on a stable regimen? Like, how would you sum up your treatment as it is now? Yeah, like thanks for pointing out that it's really not this steady trajectory upward in terms of what it means to live well and manage an illness like schizophrenia. That's really something that we wanted to exemplify and show on the channel is that you can live well with schizophrenia and still struggle at times and still have difficult periods navigating your illness. But ultimately what it means to live well is to tackle these challenges head on in a proactive and healthy way with your care team and whatnot. And yeah, I do feel that I'm in a really stable position right now where that is kind of my approach to da- to tackling difficulties that I face with the illness. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, on your channel, you've also, you know, interviewed others and you interviewed Chris Palmer and you've sort of I guess had some interest in ketosis as a potential treatment. So I'm curious to hear from you how you came across that and what your what your thoughts are about potentially using ketogenic therapy as an adjunctive therapy for for schizophrenia. Yeah, so I'm not sure how exactly I came across um, the concept of using the ketogenic diet to treat mental illnesses like schizophrenia, but it was several years ago, and. My partner and I actually decided that we wanted to give it a go and try the ketogenic diet as a means of, you know, potentially managing my schizoaffective disorder. Um, And so we didn't know a lot about what we were doing, and I don't think we did it completely in the correct way, but it was in back in 2020, we decided to try it. But then, you know, the pandemic happened and 
I became pregnant and it was very hard to keep going the way we were doing it. But we've always kind of had this piece in the back of our head of wanting to revisit in a more structured, you know, truly medical keto way and like looking at it as a metabolic therapy intervention. And yeah, we've just had the continued interest in it. And it was wonderful being able to speak with Dr. Palmer about his book and his brain energy theory and learning more about it and just diving deeper into resources about the potential benefits of the keto diet or of these metabolic interventions. And yeah, we're just really curious to see what it can do for my own mental health and then hopefully sharing that with our channel as well to hopefully help other people too. Yeah. And, you know, I think when someone's been through so many different treatment options, there are sort of two different reactions you can have to something like ketogenic therapy. One could be, here's another treatment that they say is going to work wonders and is probably going to be another failed treatment. Or it's like, wow, here's something that really, you know, works different. The science is different. It's really exciting. This might really have an impact. And I mean, I guess you could see how people could react either way. So did you have a little bit of both reactions or were you only positive or tell us about that? I think very initially when I first heard of it, it I kind of brushed it off a little bit as like, yeah. okay, yeah, more fringe science. Sure. <laughs> I'm sure this works. Sure. But, you know, digging deeper into the science behind it and hearing more anecdotally from other people who whose lives have been greatly impacted by it, I am... I am far more optimistic about it actually being a valuable and effective intervention. And so that's kind of why we made the decision to show it on our channel about the process of me going through utilizing the ketogenic diet and all these um, metabolic therapy interventions to hopefully help in managing my schizoaffective disorder. Yeah, and I think that's so cool the way you've sort of plan this to, to share, to publicly share your experiencing as, as you're going forward. And again, not sugarcoating it, right? Sugarcoating it, pun intended, I guess, but to, to show how it really is. So I'm curious, do you have any like concerns or fears about doing this, about starting ketosis and uh, first just starting ketosis in itself, but then also sort of publicly displaying it to everybody? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, important to be honest that it is hard to stick to this diet you know the first time we did it around it was hard and I'm not sure we even did it properly and so understanding that that is a very big feat that we're taking on and I have three kids who <laughs> are picky eaters my youngest in particularly is notoriously picky and I just don't think it's feasible that they're going to be able to stick to this diet as well and so that's going to be a big challenge in terms of navigating you know, creating different meals and making things that I can't eat for my kids and navigating what that looks like. So that's something that I'm a little bit leery of, but I think we're kind of planning for and figuring out how to navigate. But yeah, like you said, I really want to be as open and honest as possible about all of the difficulties involved with implementing an intervention like this, because there are very real difficulties involved with this. And I want to be honest and forthcoming about those just as much as I want to be honest about the benefits of it too. Yeah. Yeah. And now when it comes to sort of supporting someone through this transition, you know, there are a lot of options. You could have a psychiatrist, a dietitian, a health coach, a therapist, right? You could design this whole team um, who all trained in ketogenic therapy, all on the same page, but that's pretty rare. That's sort of like the, 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 top treatment that's f so few people could get. So when you think about your upcoming journey and what you're going to do, how do you see your care team and who do you hope to be involved in your care team? So I currently am fairly regularly seeing my psychiatrist and my therapist. And so they are both going to be involved throughout the process as well in terms of monitoring how it's going and being able to check in with them around that. Also, my general practitioner is kind of the one who I usually go to for blood work or anything like that. And he's kind of agreed to order any tests like that that we may need while navigating the keto diet. Um, but in addition to that, I'm also going to be working with a nutritionist as well as a keto lifestyle coach. And I realize that these are things that most people probably won't have access to. And so what we're really going to try to do through this project is to 
you know, showcase and show as much learning as possible from these professionals to our audience as well so that they have access to resources through me, I guess, of these these people who are very knowledgeable in using the keto diet. Yeah, I mean, that could be such a such an amazing result of this if if people watching you go through this helps them sort of troubleshoot things before it happens or prevent any slips that may occur or, yeah, I mean, because like it happens, right? It's not the easiest transition, but with guidance, with knowledge, with experience, it, it certainly can be. Um, yeah. Now, but what else? I mean, you know, we talk about ketogenic diet and ketogenic therapy as part of metabolic therapy. So what else uh, have you been doing or do you plan to do as part of this metabolic treatment? Yeah, so as part of this whole metabolic treatment, I think we're going to be really, really intentional about things like sleep, first and foremost, and making sure that that's really regimented in terms of getting to bed and waking up at roughly the same hours all the time. And, you know, I just have not been historically the best at that. Mm -hmm. Having three kids makes it a little bit hard sometimes to have time for myself and whatever else gets in the way of sleep. But mm -hmm. that's something that we're going to be really regimented through this process of is ensuring proper sleep, um, nutrition, obviously through the keto diet, regular exercise, and really, you know, documenting what that looks like. Things like alcohol consumption, that's something that we didn't cut out the first time we tried keto. And I think that that was a really big mistake. And so, yeah, completely cutting out alcohol, drug use, all of those sorts of things as a means of metabolic intervention too. And then something that I think people often overlook is the benefits of social connection kind of as yeah. a metabolic intervention as well. And so that's another thing that we're really going to try to focus on and yeah, really working on journaling all of these various aspects and documenting them throughout the process in order to be able to stay on top of seeing what affects what and how. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm curious in your, in your past experiences, have you found certain triggers that have, you know, either consistently or inconsistently triggered, um, some of your psychotic episodes that, that there's something that you like, I know when I do this. And so you've learned as you've gone, gone through and, and now can try to preempt that. And I'm, I, I ask in the sense of, I wonder if anything, any of those could come up with, ketogenic therapies or whatnot but yeah so what do, what have you learned about some of your triggers yeah I've I think the main thing that I've learned is just that stress is probably the biggest trigger for me and I'm sure countless other people who have challenges with their mental health as well and anytime I'm in a more stressful period or I'm taking on too many things and getting kind of overwhelmed is when my mental health suffers and I really notice mm. a decline in my mental health and so I'm optimistic that being really regimented in all of these facets of kind of what it means to take care of myself will hopefully help to safeguard and not bring up, you know, additional stresses or whatnot. But it can be an additional stress trying to live within a really regimented style. You know, that can bring up its own format of stress. So aware of that, but optimistic that the more structured routine that I'm trying to create through this metabolic intervention will ultimately help combat stress. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to say it because, again, you can interpret this sort of two ways. Like, uh, there's just so much to think about and so much to worry about. What can I eat? What can I not eat? You know, I have to worry about my sleep. Or you could say, actually, it's kind of simple. There's a simple set of rules of what I can and can't eat. You know, there's a simple set of rules of when I go to bed and when I wake up and just like stick to that. And it, it kind of gets rid of the stress and decision making. Not that it's always going to work perfectly, but maybe the decision process becomes a little bit easier, but then also yeah. how to get back on track. So, you know, when things have gone awry, when there has been increased stress, when you feel yourself, um, sort of your mental health slipping a little bit, what are some of your tips or tools that you use to, and I'll get back on track for lack of a better way to say it. Yeah, so big ones that I utilize currently are exercise. That's mm -hmm. a really big one for me. I run a lot and running something that really helps me to kind of ground myself and kind of rebalance my mental health. Um, so that's actually a big one that I already do, which will also be a metabolic therapy intervention. Mm -hmm. um, and sleep is also something that I try to focus on when I feel things are getting out of balance or I'm, I'm 
having more stress in my life, which is impacting my mental health. Those are kind of the big ones that I really turn to right now. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm sure you've heard this, but when people transition onto a ketogenic diet and into ketosis, there's frequently a, a brief dip in athletic performance and ability to, yeah. to run well. So it frequently comes back and may actually get better, but in the beginning it's something to be aware of. So I'd be curious how that yeah. affects you. Not that you can't do it, but if you if you push yourself, if you're if you're someone who enjoys sort of competing either internally or externally, sometimes that can suffer a little bit. So something to be aware of. Yeah, yeah. I'm aware of that. And I think that yeah. that's something I might struggle with to begin with. But yeah, I'm optimistic that like I've done some research into athletic performance and particularly endurance sport mm -hmm. on keto. And there are many benefits actually that keto can provide to the more endurance side of exercise and sport. So yeah, looking forward to exploring all of that with everyone on our channel as well and providing yeah. more experiential information and information about that. Yeah. Now you've you've talked about your kids and yes with kids who don't need to be in ketosis for a medical reason it could be a little more challenging. How about your husband? How about your partner? Um is he on board? Is he going to go keto with you or what's what's he doing? Yeah, he is and I'm so so grateful for that. I think that that is probably <laughs> going to be a crucial element of support I'm going to need to navigate this. And I'm really grateful that he is fully on board with going through keto with me and all of these lifestyle changes as well. Very good. Yeah. And I'll be curious to get his perspective too, as, as someone doing it for a supporting role, because that's so important too. You know, I, I think your journey is going to be crucial, but so will his, you know, as, as he, yeah. you know, he's been such a supportive part of your treatment anyway, and featured in, in so many of your videos. And this is just one more way to, to highlight that, but also some pressure on him, right? Like what if, you know, he doesn't want to, or what if things change for him and how does he balance that? And I'm, I'm just throwing ideas at you, but that could be interesting to, to highlight as well along the way. Yeah. We'll know. probably get into that as well. <laughs> Well, I, for one, am very thankful that you're taking this on in the way that you do things, because the way you do things is just so wonderful and, and, and like I said, just so raw and honest, which I think is what we need. Um, and I'm really excited to to see your journey, and I'd love to be a resource and help however I can, but you know, tell us, as you're going through, I, I hope you can come back and join us and um, and share your experience. And I certainly encourage everyone to, to check out your YouTube channel, Living Well with Schizophrenia, not just for this journey, but for all the other content you have. So any other or last words or places you want to direct our, our viewers? Um, no, I think that's it. Follow along on our channel to hear more about our ketogenic journey. And yeah, I'd love to join you more throughout the process as well. Thank you for having me today. My pleasure. Thank you.